Frank Gilfeather, who is that? I'm just a guy who breezes through life. I've been lucky. Boxing, for me, is the, the sweet science. It's not about killing each other. I'm not interested in champions. That's what it's about for me. It's about building character. If that's kept him out of trouble, if that's made him a better citizen in his community, then we're all winners. You've got a little window of opportunity to cash in on what you've just done. Can he win the title tonight? That's a big question we're all asking here. I, I just decided there and then on that stool, when I finish here tonight, that's me finish boxing. The body is weak, the body is tired, but the grit will get me through it. Well, my name is Frank Gilfeather. I come from Dundee, actually, but live and have lived in Aberdeen in the northeast of Scotland for about 55 years. Um, I'm 78 and I'm a journalist and broadcaster, or at least I was up until about six months ago, and now I'm, I'm a, virtually a full-time boxing coach, or what do they say, an influencer. Two big things for me are that many of you are like this, right? And for me, as a boxer, Lots of guys are like this, and I say to them, why? Now let me, just stay where you are. Let me pick on you. <laughs> What's your name? Aaron. Aaron. When I, put, when I do a left jab, it's meaningful. Keep it like that, right? If I did that there, bang! Even knock yourself out, right? I've got an issue with that. Frank, you'll fit well. <laughs> well, I don't know if, listen, how can I answer that question? Uh, Frank Gilfeather, who is that? I'm just a guy who breezes through life. I've been lucky. I've got a great family. I've always had great family. We're all a very tight family. Uh, my kids are, are all close and my, uh, you know, I'm lucky. Um, so Frank Gilfeather is a guy who got lucky. I got lucky in boxing because because I, I was introduced to boxing by my, my dad. I got lucky in journalism because it was a job of a lifetime in terms of I, I couldn't wait to get into work every day. I just loved it as a news journalist. Then I went into sport. I got lucky because I started covering Aberdeen Football Club in an era when Sir Alec Ferguson was the manager and so they were winning everything. So that was lucky. And now I'm lucky because I turned out to be something called a social media influencer and people are actually telling me your opinion matters. <laughs> How lucky is that? You guys got, right? There, I'm offering him the whole of my body. Let me see you stand. Right. That's your target. Throw a right hand. Okay, again. Okay. That's a good right hand. Put it there. Try it again. That's better. Try it again. Why? Why is that better? Because Aaron and all the guys that have their hands up here have, you know, in, in a nanosecond, I give you that, but they still got to get the hand, the fist in a position to throw it properly, right? For me, if you put your hand up, that would be the target. For me, everything comes from shoulder level. Right? Now if I'm up here, I can't get it. Try it again. What have you turn your body more? What have you turn your body more? Difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So punches are not just about landing with a fist. They're about the movement of the body. Well, my dad um, forever ran boxing clubs, amateur boxing clubs. And I had two older brothers, one, um, the, the oldest one, 11 years older than me, um, Daniel, and he was a British youth champion in 1949. And then Dennis, who's a couple of years younger than him, Dennis, uh, he was a boxer too. He boxed for Scotland, was Scottish champion. And, uh, and spent a, a long, long time as, as an amateur boxer. Now, so there's this big gap in our family in terms of ages. 
I came along and at the age of four, so around 40, 1949-50, at the age of four, I would go along with my dad to his boxing club and I was soaking up this atmosphere and the, the smell of wintergreen and sweat and people thumping the bags and the noise and all that. And I don't know what, it must have, it's kind of entered my DNA. And, and so I just continued and I went and won all the youth titles available to me. And then at the age of 16, when I'd kind of run out of opponents, my club asked, my club at the time, my dad had given up by then, had asked the SABA if I could be allowed to box against seniors. Seniors in those days was 17 and upwards. Today it's 19 and upwards. And so at the age of 16, I started boxing men, you know, 25, 29, 30 year old men. I fought two 31 year olds once when I was 16 and I was beating them all. Right, because I, my dad wasn't a coach, he was a theorist. And we would sit down and without me knowing it, it was subliminal, he would talk to me about things in boxing, about how to defend, about the backhand that I keep going on about protecting your chin. And all these things were important because it made me enter the ring with the science in mind to hit without being hit back. That was always kind of the aim. Of course, it never you can't get it right, but you can try. And so that was important to me. And I learned everything I knew about boxing from him. My dad was my hero, right? Um, my dad died six weeks before his 99th birthday. But my dad always gave me advice. Uh, um, and it was kind of sometimes subliminal advice, what he was giving it, and you never really fully thought about it, but it was going in. And his one was always, be true to yourself, right? And that's one aspect. Be true to yourself, but always recognize other people will might have a different point of view and you've got to allow them to have a different point of view. And you, you do not necessarily tell them they're wrong. But what you can say is, I think my way or, or what I'm saying is right, but I do recognize your right to say something different. And the other thing too is, never turn away. Never turn away from anybody. Uh, my dad never turned away from anybody. If somebody knocked on the door, because he was a kind of, he was a pillar of his community. He went there because he had a brain, self-educated, lost his dad in World War I when he was six years old. And he, at that, he took on a level of responsibility when he was six, because his mother, my granny, worked in the jute mills hard work from six in the morning till six at night with a half hour break at lunchtime. And so she brought up four boys on their own. My dad was a strong character, strong personality, assumed a bit of responsibility even at an early age. So take things on your shoulders. Take responsibility for yourself. Take, take responsibility for your family. They're the most important people in your life. And don't turn your back on anybody. If somebody needs help, if you can help them, you might not be able to. If you can help them, help them. If you can't, point them in the direction of help that might be available to them. But don't say, no, I'm sorry, I can't help you, and close the door on them. Give them what you can of yourself. Look, never. So if they're traveling towards you, they're always the same distance apart. Sideways, same distance apart. Everything, right? Why? Because it's, well, we know the answer. As soon as you come together with your feet and your hip, you'll topple, right? You're off balance. Let's join hands, right? Let's join hands, right? Now, if we, our feet are like this and we're going in this one direction, we don't bring them together, what are we doing? We're Scottish country dancing. And back again. And You feel that? 
And then when you were growing up in boxing as a youth, you were tending to box the same guy often. You, you, you know, I box guys sometimes three, four, five times within the district. But you're always learning. Sometimes you would lose. And then, as, as you reach a, a better level and you're boxing internationally, then you find the difference. I mean, for example, when you go to Eastern Europe, the communist countries where their boxing teams are full-time, and virtually half of them were in the army, so they, could, they were training full-time as... Uh, in fact, I, I boxed one guy called Stoyan Pilichev. And, of course, it, everything was ignorance in those days. You never knew, who is this guy, I don't know. And I looked at him across the ring. We would line up in, in two, two rows like this, across from each other at the start, and everybody's announced for the crowd, and then you would leave the ring, and the, the first fight would go in. And I'm looking at this guy as we're lining up, and I thought, mm, he's a bit heavy for me, it can't be... And I'm looking up the line and I'm looking at Andy Peace, the welterweight, or Tom Embry, who was an ABA champion, the light middleweight. And I'm saying, uh, Andy, I, th I think I've got your guy here. And, and he's going, no, I don't want about this. No, I said, look at him. You know, this guy was a sheer athlete. He, and he was a man of about 26. I'm, I was 17, 18. And he was, you know, he, he was a perfect athlete. He was like, you know, he couldn't be better. And I'm saying, no, I've got... So this guy watches me, Pilichev watches me doing all this, and he, he, he clocks what's happening. <laughs> and he said to me, uh, excuse me, he said, are you Gil Feather? And I said, yes. Oh, yeah, man, this guy. And he said, Pilichev, I'm boxing you. And I went, no, no, please, tell me you're not... And he, so what did I learn later? He was a European silver medalist. Now, there was an argument in those days to win a European title was harder than it, to win a, an Olympic title because of the Eastern Bloc of boxers where they were all, they were all boxing for their country, but really for the, for the prestige that it brought to their country. We were working and training three nights a week after our jobs and, and going and training on a Saturday, and uh, they, these guys, the, the guy said to me afterwards, how long have you been training for this? And I said, well, well just a normal, you know, three. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, we've been away for six weeks in the mountains training for this international match. So he beat me very, not easily, but comfortably. Uh, I learned a lot from that. You're about my height and weight, I think. <laughs> And if I can't batter you, Neve is next on, on their priorities. Right, have you been listening to me? <laughs> yeah. Let's see you. Let's see you. Right, you haven't been listening. You've been listening to me now. Why? Because when you first went, you were like this. Boy, you go like that. That's nice. Jab. Jab. Not flick. Good. Harder. Oh, good. Jab cross. He knows what he's doing. Don't start up your own gym. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This is what I like. I like it when people are listening and carrying out. What's your name? Uh, Ginger. 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 All right. Why have you got a gum shield in? Who's hitting you? <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Why, did, why didn't you do that at the start, Ginch? Come on. Oh, now, what does that do? Your guy's going like this, isn't it? Right, jab cross. He gets it. Again. Ah. Oh. Right, get back. You've not even done it. <laughs> you get it, right? No. I travel to gyms all over the country. And the number of people that get it, like you do, you did, it's minuscule, right? I need 
I need you to think about it. So what I need you to do is practice, practice, practice until you feel I'm connecting better. I'm making more of an impact on this guy's chin, right? Now, don't go into a, don't go into a contest with a flaky jab because that gives the guy hope. It gives him encouragement, your, your opponent. What we need is something more meaningful. Bang, sending it out. He shouldn't be doing I see so many coaches with boxers who are bleeding like sheep and, and, and then they're going, come on, come on. That's the last thing they want to do. They're taking punch after punch and their coaches are going, come on, come on. Now, I've seen experienced coaches do that. So I'm thinking, why, why are you... Why are you doing it? Why are you in this sport if, you, if it's all about aggression for you? Where is the science? Where is the technique? Where is the skill? Where is the thinking? Right, and I think when we get back to that, and I think we've lost that, I may be wrong. Now, listen, I'm willing to be corrected here, but I think we've lost that. I watch kids who are told, put your hands here, right, and there's this big gap through the middle. And I watched them, and I've been in gyms where I've watched them, and I've, I've bitten my tongue, and I've watched the coaches say, "Yeah, put your hands here and go forward," and they're bang, bang, bang. There was one kid I went up to, and I saw him, and he, and I, and he was 16, and I said to him, "You do realise that you're taking left jabs right through the centre of your your guard, don't you?" And he said, "Yeah," like as if. You know, I expect that. And I said, you do know that you can prevent that. And he said, how? And I, and, and I said, we're going back to what you were saying, Joe. Here. What do you think that's for? That's not just for punching. The noble art of self-defense. Take the punch here. And when you've learned how to take the punch and you're confident and you're courageous enough to let the punch come right up to your chin and stop you, not against your chin, just away, a couple of inches away. Then I will teach you how to parry. And they really looked at me as if I was kind of some weirdo thinking, where did you get that from? You know, because I think they think when they look at me and they listen to me and think, now oh, here's an old geezer, you know, he's, he's harking back to the 1850s and 60s, the 60s when he boxed, but it's changed. But here's my question, has it changed for the better? It's how effective it can be. Chin, you think, oh my goodness, he suckered me there. So let's do this. Go on, let's see it. So, jab, I don't mind if you're doing it slowly. I want the jab straight out and come off the wall a bit. Grit, you need it when the chips are down. And it all comes from the mind. I'm struggling here. I need to do something to get myself out of this problem. The body is weak. The body is tired, but the grit will get me through it. Right, I'll give you a story. This is funny. I used to, I used to coach a little bit in, the, in a boxing club in Aberdeen. It's another one. In the Aberdeen Amateur Boxing Club. And so I used to take the young kids. and I liked them in the ring. Not for my sake, but for them. They thought it was great to enter a ring. I mean, it's, a, it's exciting, isn't it? So there was a guy... He was about 14, no, he wasn't, he was about 12. He was overweight and he wasn't athletic in any way. And I could suss it out, right? He was shy, right? And, and he was kind of set apart from the other boys. And so I, I sussed this out early on. So I used to have them in the ring, right? Next, and we'd spar and I'd, you know, I used to annoy the, the, the hell out of them because they'd be throwing punches and I'd just go in there and there and there and they'd get, get like this. And then find, they were all done and the last guy I would call in would be him because I knew he didn't want to be in the ring and being watched by his peers in case they made fun of him or whatever because he was a bit overweight. I would get him every night. And what I did was I, as we sparred, I didn't punch him, obviously, but I pretended, and I'd hit him on the elbows and so on. I did a commentary. So whatever his name was, John, 
right, John's up against Frank now, and John's got a great jab, and come on now, and he's doing this, and I think I'll do my commentary. And I could see this guy changing, right? And he's, he's, he's brilliant now. He's, what, he thinks he's in his, in his mind, and this is, in his mind, he's, he's a boxer. So the next night came, we're not in the club, and he would go, and I'd start sparring with him, and he said, uh, oh, you do your commentary. And I said, okay, fine. And John, he's going to throw a good jab. Can he win the title tonight? That's a big question we're all asking here. And the crowd are rallying behind John. And so I had to do this night after night with this one guy. But it worked, right? So, spin on, I left that club after a few years. Go fast forward. I'm coming at a press conference at Aberdeen Football Club. I was covering a press conference there. And we're coming out with Day, and years has passed. So I'm, I'm thinking, so he was 12 at the time, now he's about 17. Right, so five years has passed. I'm walking out, this tall, slim guy with a girl beside him is walking towards me. And he said, hi, Frank, how are you? And I looked at him, I didn't know who he was. This guy had changed you know, immeasurably. And I said, how are you doing? Fine. He said, do you remember me? And I said, yeah. And he said, remember the, you used to spar and then of course the clock. And I said, yeah. I said, how are you? He said, fine. He said, uh, I bought for Scotland now. And I looked at him, I said, really? Yeah. And he said, yeah, I've, had, uh, I've bought three times for Scotland. And I said, that's fantastic. And I think, where is this coming from? It's, it's just, it's just, it just hasn't happened. And he said, yeah, yeah. But then I clocked it. He looked at me and he looked sideways to his girlfriend. This is a story he'd been spinning to his girlfriend, that he's a, a Scottish international boxer. So I played along with it. And I said, yeah, I've seen some of your fights. I said, you're doing so well. Yeah, great to see you. Where you went? Now, he'd been out of boxing, but he's telling his girlfriend, I box for Scotland. I was now being invited <laughs> to rubber stamp that claim and away he went but you know what I felt good for you <laughs> he felt great and all that he thinks he's a boxer and if that you know if that's made him if that's kept him out of trouble if that's made him a better citizen in his community then we're all winners you know and that's what I want to create we're not going to create Olympic medalists all the time or champions all the time you only get a, you know you only get a few of these but if you create somebody that's leaving the gym a better person feeling better within themselves and going home and saying why I can't wait till next time we get in the gym that's I'm a winner if I've done that, that the, yeah amateur boxing clubs for me are all about community right that every member is not going to be good a good boxer. I, to me, that doesn't matter. I, I want everybody and as many people, young people as possible, into a boxing club to learn. Now, we've, I've been in situations where I've coached kids, 14, 15 year old, and they've been so enthusiastic. Frank, come here, am I, am I doing it properly? And I'll say, no, you're not doing it properly, but I'll show you how to do it properly. And, and they would do it, and I'd stand there again, 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 and I'd, and I'd say, I'll be back. And I'd walk away and coach other people, come back, and that guy would be back doing what he was doing wrong in the first place. And I would say, no, we do it again. And eventually, you lose patience. No, you know, and, and I had a joke with them, and I think, no, I think to myself, okay, you're, you're terrific. This, what you're doing is brilliant. It's not, but I, I want them to puff out their chest. And I want them to leave the boxing club at night and go back to their mum and dad and say, Frank said, I, you know, I've got a good right hook or I've got a job. I want that. And, and so that's what it's about for me. It's about building character. If you don't get it, practice, practice, practice. Anything else? Should we get some pictures organised? Yeah. Guys, anyone? We'll get a big picture at the time. A big group picture. Great. Brilliant. That's a looking bunch. Thank you. <laughs> I had a great time, right? By the time I was 21, I thought, I remember it well. I was boxing in the Scottish Championships in Edinburgh. And I was boxing this guy 
who really wasn't in my league. But I wasn't, I, there was something in me, I, there was no spark. And I was being caught with left jabs. And I was thinking, what, what's wrong with me? You know, I'm, 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 not, I'm not doing it tonight. And I went back and my, my, my trainer, Jim Monroe, beautiful man, lovely man, a salt of the earth guy, he said to me, what's, what's wrong with you? I said, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's nothing going on up here. And I said to him, do you know what? I said, this is, going, this is my finale. He said, what? I said, I, I've had enough. I'm, you know, I can't explain that. But that's, that's how it happened to me. I, I just decided there and then on that stool, when I finish here tonight, that's me finish boxing. And the one thing my dad always said to me and to, all, and to my brothers, if you're going to do it, do it well. If you're not going to do it properly, if you're not going to train, then out. You, 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 because the boxing ring is too dangerous a place if you're not ready, if you're not prepared. And so I remember that and I thought, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go on. And that was fine. I made the clean break and that was it. I never went near a gym for years and years and years. And that was the end. For me, the guys who run boxing clubs are the heroes, in my view, of amateur boxing. Because without them, there'd be no clubs. Without clubs, there'd be no boxers. Without boxers, there'd be no champions. I won three Scottish Youth Championships, Scottish Senior title. I won three Midlands District Championships, and I boxed 17 times for Scotland. I'm getting lots of comments from guys. This is true. I'm 54, I used to box, uh, but now I'm overweight and I haven't done, I've been on the couch for years, you know. But watching your videos, they say, has inspired me to get up. But you hit the bag so hard, and you hit the, and the speed and all that. Why don't you just kind of slow down? And my answer is, I, it's the only way I know how to do it. It's something noble about boxing, because you are actually pitting your wits, your skill, your strength, your stamina, your punching power against somebody who's trying to do the same to you. There's something noble about that. But what makes it different, what makes the better guys different, is the art within that boxing. We're all boxers. In that moment, in those hour and a half, in that hour and a half or two hours in the boxing club, we are all boxers. And we join as boxers and we leave as boxers. And that's what makes amateur boxing clubs special.